Uh-oh. Okay. We are connected. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh-oh. That's a lazy good morning. Good morning. <laughs> That's better. We wake up. We wake up. It's December 11th. It's a Monday. We are start Very good, Sibel. We are starting our week. Huh? Oh, look at that. I have a smiley face cup. What happened to the face? It all got pop marks. <laughs> okay. Let's read the gospel for the day. One day as Jesus, this is, this is from uh, the gospel of St. Luke. Okay, chapter 5, verses 17 to 26. One day as Jesus was teaching <coughs> Pharisees and teachers of the law. <coughs> excuse me. Who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem were sitting there. And the power of the Lord was with him for healing. And some men brought on a stretcher a man who was paralyzed. They were trying to bring him in and set him in his presence. But not finding a way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on the stretcher through the tiles into the middle in front of Jesus. <laughs> These guys are very uh, creative in their ways of doing things. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, As for you, your sins are forgiven. Okay? As for you, your sins are forgiven. So imagine this, that scenario. There must have been plenty, peop plenty of people. And so Jesus was being crowded in by plenty of people. Right? Big crowd. And he was teaching. And he was healing. He was curing the sick. So a group of friends wanted to bring their friend, their paralytic friend to Jesus. But there was just no way to get inside and no way to put themselves in front of Jesus. See? Because of the crowd. So they got creative. They became creative in the way they, they, they did it. They went up to the roof. And they took off some of the tiles of the roof of the house and lowered their friend right there in front of Jesus. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine how the paralytic might have felt? Okay. I'm being brought up to the roof. Okay. He must have been hanging on to dear life, right? And then, <coughs> and then he was being lowered. <coughs> little by little, little by little, he must have been thinking, my, my gosh, you guys are crazy, right? It's the height of craziness to be doing that, right? <laughs> but, but here is where you have to admire, you have to admire the persistence of the, his friends. You have to admire how much those friends must have loved their friend, right? That they were willing to do anything. They were willing to go out of their way, think outside the box, okay? And do what it takes to achieve their goal. To achieve the goal of bringing their friend to Jesus for healing. So you see, this behavior, this behavior is, is very much, um, you know, it, it has two sides to it. It has, both, it has both a human side to it and a, a, uh, a supernatural side to it. That specific uh, scenario right there, that behavior of those friends. Okay? On the human side, on the side of personal development, okay? uh, they showed a lot of, a lot of human virtues. Okay? Uh, foremost of which is persistence. Persistence to achieve a goal. They wanted to achieve that goal of bringing this friend to Jesus. They know it was something good. They know Jesus was going to heal, heal him. They know it's going to benefit their friend. So they did everything it took. Eh? Even if they had to exercise extreme uh, uh, means in order to get what they want. We should learn a lesson from that. We should not easily give up when there are obstacles along our way of achieving a goal. Eh? We should not give in 
to the difficulties that we encounter every day. We should fight them off. We should think creatively. We should find a solution to our uh, uh, concerns. Find a solution to problems. Find a solution to obstacles instead of just caving in and giving up and say, well, okay, sorry, I can't do anything. See? So even from the human point of view, these friends exhibited very good uh, 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 behavior here, very good attitude as far as problems, obstacles are concerned. Now, on the supernatural side of things, these friends also exhibited great faith. Okay? Great faith. They believed in Jesus. They believed in the healing power of Jesus. They believed that Jesus can do a miracle for their friends. Okay? So what faith? See? What faith these people really uh, uh, showed? Okay? It's something that's remarkable. Remarkable. Other people who did not believe as much on Jesus and what Jesus can do would have easily just said, you know what, forget it. Forget it. You just suffer all through your life and be a paralytic. <laughs> but no. Okay? These guys showed great faith. And that is why Jesus praised them for it. He said, when Jesus saw their faith, you see, Jesus did not even see their persistence. Jesus did not even pay attention to their creativity. You see? Jesus did not pay attention to, to uh, how, how determined they are. Okay? Jesus didn't even look at that. But he looked at their soul. Jesus looked at their soul and he paid attention to their soul and saw not only determination, not only persistence, not only creativity. He went beyond the human uh, factors that made these friends great friends. What they saw was their faith. What he saw was their faith. Okay? And faith, as Jesus himself said, can move mountains. Okay? Faith can move mountains. And that's exactly what happened here. See? It could move mountains. It, 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 it pushed these friends to move that mountain, move that obstacle. The mountain here is an obstacle. Move that obstacle away, get it out of the way, and get their friend to Jesus for healing. See? So that is remarkable. That's remarkable. And that's a lesson all of us can learn here. All of us should learn this lesson of persistence in our faith. So when we pray, when we pray for things that we need, when we pray for intentions that other people uh, ask us to pray for, when we pray and ask Jesus to, to, uh, to uh, practically perform a miracle for us or for other people, let us remember to be persistent, to be determined, but moreover, to have plenty of faith, to really believe that Jesus is going to give us what we ask for. That Jesus is going to do for us the favor that we ask of Him. But, we better make sure that it is really something good. That it is really for our own good. Okay? Or that it is good for others. Like these friends knew that bringing their friend to Jesus was something good. It was going to do good to their friend. And they stopped at nothing. Nothing could uh, be uh, too big an obstacle for them to bring their friend to Jesus. So such faith, such admirable faith, is what we need to also exercise and exhibit in everything that we do. Okay? Hey? That's it for us today, folks. Have a good day, everybody. And uh, today is uh, that we are already into uh, starting the third week of Advent. And uh, I'd like to remind everybody, remind everybody, eh? Advent is a time of preparation. Advent is a time of cleaning house. Not your physical home, but the house of your soul. Eh? Let us engage in in, in, in house cleaning, cleaning up our house. Not too much on shopping around for gifts and stuff like that, right? Let us be mindful of the gift that we will give Jesus when he arrives. The gift of a clean, pure, well-mortified soul. Eh? 
That is what's important this time of Advent, to prepare our soul to receive Jesus so that when He arrives, not only arriving on earth, but arriving also in our soul, He's going to find our soul to be clean, to be pure, to be really prepared to accept Him and receive His coming. Let our souls be the stable where Jesus will be born and born again and again and again and again. See, not only at Christmas time, but every day. But this time of Advent gives us a very special opportunity to really, really prepare that soul. See? To really prepare that soul and, and uh, make Jesus find a nice, comfy uh, abode where he doesn't have to struggle with the coldness of our heart. Okay? Let us warm it up. Let us warm it up with plenty of sacrifice, plenty of spirit of sacrifice, plenty of, uh, uh, of love, okay? of love for Jesus. And, and it starts here at home. It starts by the way you love and the way you serve your brothers and sisters. Okay? So, yes, Mia, you have a question, yeah? No, we just finished the second week. Yeah, so we're already beginning on the third week of Advent. Okay, so the third week of Advent is supposed to be the joyful anticipation, the joyful anticipation already of uh, the coming of Jesus, right? So we should be happy that Jesus is coming.